Hi there, everyone. Rob here with today's Western Pacific weather update. I do want to start off by saying I have uh, just uh, got back from Ikea Bar today. That's about the otaku uh, slash electronic slash manga capital of the world and especially capital for Japan. And today I purchased uh, this fun little device. It's going to be a new tool I'll be using here on these updates. It's actually a, a smart tablet or a smart pen tablet. So I'll be able to uh, draw fronts and uh, low pressure, high pressure, and certain arrows and etc. on satellite imageries and weather maps as well. So it's just another tool I can use. I do want to note though my handwriting is already horrible. So maybe this tablet might not help out too much, but it might give you a little bit more visualization while I do do these updates. So uh, that's all on that though. Let's look out here at the Western Pacific and please bear with me because this is going to be the first time I'm using this. And the main topic for today has been this here, just southeast of the Marianas Islands. This is Invest 90W. It actually was declared a TCFA or a Tropical Cyclone Formation Alert by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, but they have since canceled it due to its loss of convection. But as you can see right now, there actually is some outflow coming out of it. You can see a pertinent uh, circulation actually developing around that center of circulation, which is right in here, and actually some convection blowing up in that area right now. So with that said, this potentially could have a further development out of it as it continues to push off here towards the west. And at this time, it does look like it will continue to push towards the west, basically following this line right here as, uh, oops, as it continues to push there. It will eventually continue to track off on the western periphery of the West Pack High, which is located right in this area. As you all know, uh, these low pressure areas, these warm core lows, like to follow the area of least resistance. So with that high pressure off there towards the north and the cyclonic or anti-cyclonic, excuse me, circulation around it, it will continue to follow in that direction. With, so what does that mean? Well, at least at this time, it means that uh, Guam and much of the Marianas Islands, it looks like it should be some fair weather for you going into the next several days as that continues to push off there towards the west. And at least at this time, some of the model outlooks are actually agreeing with this. Let's look at first GFS, and you see this area pushing off there towards the west. and actually moves a little bit closer to the Marianas Islands, but I don't think that is going to happen before it pushes off towards the northwest. And that's all it is. The GF has just picking up on this little area here, moving off towards the Philippine Sea. If anything, there in the Philippines, you just have to worry more about the southwest monsoon, all that moisture pushing in out of the South China Sea, instead of Invest 90W. But let's look at no gaps. Another one of these global models here, and as you can see, going into the next several days, it skirts just south of Guam. You might see some outer rain bands push onshore, but like I said, I don't think anything significant. But look at this going into next week as it continues to push off there towards the west. It actually, no gaps in the long range expects this to develop into a significant tropical system. So with that said, uh, just like I said yesterday, it's something to continue to watch very closely. And as far as the official agency here, JMA continues to have it as a low pressure area just southeast of Guam here. So with that said, at least the official agency is still watching this very closely. And once again, you see those isobars off towards the north. You have a little bit of troughing right in this area. That's also going to assist this to recurve. And then it would likely get caught up with the bayou rainy season front before rushing there off towards the northeast. And on that note, I actually want to talk about the rainy season front here. Because over much of Japan, you have been seeing some rain showers. And actually today in the Kanto area, some cloud cover formed up due to afternoon heating combined with the instability in the atmosphere. But when we talk about the bayou season or the Mayo season, it's this long front here stretching across the southern Japanese islands now extending all the way out there towards the east and this is really just due to the interaction of the uh, building of the West Pack High down here towards the south, you have that coming in as this atmosphere heats up, it builds in. And also the Siberian High way off here towards the north, that's continuing the weaken. And actually, as it does weaken, the southwest monsoon continues to build in from the south. And really that Siberian High turns into the Siberian Low, which forms up often during the summer months. And that's just a quick, short, down and dirty version of why the southwest monsoon continues to occur and also these rainy seasons occur over Japan. But really, as this continues to build, in and that continues to weaken this is going to continue to push off there towards the north thus bringing the threat of more rainfall thunderstorm activity all that across most of japan and actually, if we take a look at some of these rain totals coming out of Japan, you hear, see here in one of the islands just offshore of the mainland, about 53 millimeters in the past 24 hours, and even off there towards the north, right around uh, Sendai, 51 millimeters. So that rainy season really is setting uh, in place quite significantly over many of these islands. But check out this, just north of Okinawa, 
146 millimeters of rainfall in just a 24 hour period. So plenty of rain to go around up here, but also towards the south. Let's look around Phuket here and actually 51 millimeters coming out of this area and just north of there. 123 millimeters of rainfall in just a 24-hour period. Thus, this is causing the increased risk of flooding and already playing reports coming out of these regions, but also the landslides and some of these steeper elevations. And as you can see here on the visible slash infrared imagery, plenty of convection to go around. Actually, look over here over northern Luzon. You have all of these thunderstorms popping up there, extending all the way out towards Apari. Even Luzon, or even, excuse me, Manila, you're actually having some storms blow up there just north of the capital city. So with that said, there is that high risk of uh, thunderstorm activity going into the next uh, several days because this pattern does look like it's going to be continuing to hold still here. But also, let's look over Malaysia because you have the uh, sea breeze effect coming in from the north and also from the south here. And look there right across the center portions of the peninsula. This happens every day. This is not anything new to people across this area, but you have that thunderstorm activity continuing to blow up there, and thus you have that risk of flooding as well. And actually, Francis, uh, out of Malaysia here, he continues to have great updates on uh, southeastern Asia and on the flooding there, so please do continue to check in with his articles at westernpacificweather.com for more information on that. And also continue to check our daily satellite updates. Uh, these are put out by Adonis and actually uh, very informative. So I'll be putting the link below this video if you do want to uh, go and see these uh, daily updates. That is all for right now, everybody. Thanks again for watching here at westernpacificweather.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, as always, please post them in the comment box below. Have a great day.